Well, you've got to imagine this guy with these teeth in front of these teeth right here in front. These are the guys that really do the milling here. And uh, they're noticeable by, by the switching of this tail when they get excited or nervous or curious. And if you've got a nice walnut or any sort of pecan or something like that, because his four front teeth uh, cut into walnuts very easily, and they do the same thing with the man's hand. De definitely animals you gotta wanna pay attention to. As long as they're in the yard, they're okay, but uh, I don't know, out of control could be a problem. Rodentia scurrius carolinesis. No, it's not a creature from a Spielberg film, but the common squirrel. <laughs> So you guys like squirrels? Oh yeah, oh yeah, squirrels. Mm -hmm. We love squirrels. I like squirrels. Oh yes, love squirrels. Uh, they're uh, very smart. Animals. Ray Clark is the public historian for Washington County, and like a lot of us, has a paradoxical opinion of the squirrel. On the one hand, it's one of God's beautiful forest creatures. But on the other, and for anyone who's had to defend a garden or bird feeder, the squirrel can be a little devil. As a historian, Ray and the people of Salem, Indiana, most certainly have an informed opinion of the squirrel from a time long ago when squirrels did more than just invade a bird feeder. What little was written about this mysterious event is kept in these archives. In the fall of 1833, there was a remarkable march of squirrels through the county. They came from the north in countless millions and stopped not for any sort of obstruction passing right through even houses and barns and across streets. As far as you can see through the woods, here is nothing but a, a drove of squirrels coming through, eating everything in its way. From just a few lines written about the great squirrel invasion of 1833 and 1834, longtime Salem residents E.E. E. Martin and Harry Baker take over with oral history and tales passed down by generations of squirrel invasion survivors. It was said to have been literally millions of squirrels that came through. So we would have to imagine some kind of a mass migration through all of these trees. I don't believe there's any good scientific record for any migratory habits of squirrels. They uh, would tend as a group not to be migratory animals. There are Zoologist are Julian Duvall of the Indianapolis Zoo is skeptical of Salem's squirrel saga. Right? Now uh, this is this is now this, this is, is true. This is this a true, is true story. If the residents of Salem can be excused for any embellishment, it's because their horror story goes all the way back 160 years to when Hoosiers first settled Indiana. Pioneers began to carve farmland out of vast hardwood forests, the home and food source to millions of squirrels, a classic ecological imbalance. Although there's a dispute as to the magnitude of Mother Nature's reaction, clearly something happened. Uh, Salem grew a lot of corn, still does grow a lot of corn. There was a lot of feed for them here. Quite simply, the squirrels came out of the forests and onto farmland. Some reports have the squirrels invading from the north. Many other people, however, claim they attacked from the south, from Kentucky. This is where the legend takes off, because back then there weren't any bridges crossing the Ohio. Uh, squirrels actually uh, swam the Ohio River to get into uh, Indiana. Uh, but these actually would come across uh, by the thousands. And it was said that, that there were so many of them and so wide that a person could have walked across on them. John J. Audubon, the famous bird watcher, had his gaze distracted long enough to report thousands of squirrels fording the mighty Ohio. In any event, this nation's second largest river was no match to the crazed, hungry squirrels. The great squirrel invasion was on. <laughs> Squirrels were so hungry that they just cleaned everything out in their path, just like the locusts out in, in uh, the west. And, uh, to be invaded by the squirrels was a whole lot like uh, Pharaoh when he was invaded by the frogs. They were so fat 
that they were unable to climb smoothed barked trees. William Borden, who lived in Salem at the time, wrote one of the few personal accounts of the invasion. They were plentiful, and the strange migratory instinct rendered them so insensible to danger that they were slain in great numbers with clubs. Uh, squirrels are very agile. I mean, they can move, uh, and I can, I can visualize listening to this. I was just thinking the way they can maneuver. Mm -hmm. And then when he stops and looks around, you've got a good time to uh, just squeeze the trigger off real slowly and uh, shoot him. There was no stopping them. They just kept coming and coming by the thousands. If you just saw the squirrels in your mind's eye, uh, uh, you, you can imagine the little uh, the squirrel's teeth, their sharp teeth. Can you imagine them coming? I can. So you can actually see the squirrels coming? Oh, I can coming? actually see the squirrels coming, yes. I think it would have been a scary time because people wouldn't have known what was going on. You know, people uh, time and again have thought the end of the world was coming. And then, just as quickly as it began, it was over. Now, is this all the information you have in the entire library on the Great Squirrel Invasion? In the entire library, uh huh. Uh, people have uh, read legends, and uh, they talk about the uh, Squirrel Invasion uh, of, uh, of 1833, but this is all we have in the library. So uh, there, there is a little bit of truth as well as a, a little bit of filling in that, that the author sometimes does. Some farmers were left without sufficient corn to make their winter's bread. Where they came from and whither they went, no one ever knew. 